Number 2. The Story From the very start of this movie, I could tell something was really wrong, just by the way it started. It opens with some boring pilot asking for permission to land on a ship that looks like a half-eaten donut with a donut hole in the middle. What the fuck is that? Then two cloaked figures walk into a room in a completely flat angle. They sit down in a conference room, drink tea, and wait to talk about a trade dispute with something that looks like my ex-wife. While they eventually do get to the ball-numbing, mindless action that the fanboys crave, I found myself utterly bored already. Compare this fecal matter to the opening of the original Star Wars. This just means don't waste my time. You keep it nice and simple. Mike continues to prove my point of his a limited mental focus with his baseless criticisms of the pilot, donut hole spaceship, flat shots, but I guess that means something coming from the famous director, and mindless action. The reason that these are baseless is because the designs, costumes, and sets are all perfectly done, and he backs this up with the opening scene from A New Hope that's all just mindless action for the first two and a half minutes, opposed to The Phantom Menace's first four minutes of setup, then the mindless action, proving Mike's a limited mental focus. Mike persisting to put these constraints on the prequels because they aren't enough like the originals, which they aren't supposed to, they are their own movies. The prequels should be very similar in style to the originals, because I don't like things that are different. Which is something the sequels tried and failed, and then tried to become their own movies and failed at that. So the film is called The Phantom Menace, and by the nature of the story, there is no clear villain. How about a bad guy in the movie whose motivation is clear? If Mike even bothered to watch these movies without losing focus for every few seconds, he would know who the bad guys are. The Chinese aliens are the henchmen of Sith Lord Palpatine. Those are the bad guys. It's all introduced at the very start. And then later on in the movie, Palpatine's goal is introduced too, because he's trying to use Naboo's conflict to show incompetence in the current Chancellor so he can become the new Chancellor. Number three, death and space taxes. So the Jedis are there to do what exactly? According to the opening title crawl, it was to settle a dispute over the taxation of trade routes. Oh. So what makes the Jedi Knights experts in intergalactic trade laws? So the Trade Federation have set up a blockade around Naboo in order to stop them from getting space supplies, which instantly causes some kind of crisis that we never see. Okay. I don't get it. Why would an organization called the Trade Federation want to blockade trade? There's the blockade! Usually a blockade is to stop something you don't want to get in? So if the Trade Federation were like merchants moving goods and services around the galaxy, then why did they seem more like a military with armies or robots? However, if they were like a bureaucracy that was in charge of overseeing and regulating trade routes, you'd think they'd be happy about the whole new space taxes. Unless all the taxes went straight to like Space Obama and they didn't see any of it? The point is, I'm still not sure what the donut chips were there to do. So what Mike's doing here is making the movie so complicated that you would have to agree with him. When really it's all so simple. The Chinese aliens have created this conflict because Palpatine told them to create this conflict. It is only because they're following the orders of Palpatine. And that's why everyone in the movie constantly mentions how absurd this conflict is. Because it doesn't make any sense. Is it in their nature to make us wait this long? No. I sense an unusual amount of fear for something as trivial as this trade dispute. There is something else behind all this, Your Highness. There's no logic in the Federation's move here. My feelings tell me they will destroy you. Palpatine is literally playing them as fools. And later in Attack of the Clones, this is reinforced that they were played as fools. Hundreds of senators are now under the influence of a Sith Lord called Darth Sidious. I don't believe you. The Viceroy of the Trade Federation was once in league with this Darth Sidious. But he was betrayed ten years ago by the Dark Lord. He came to me for help. He told me everything. 
Then Mike goes on to discredit all his previous points by just acknowledging the plot. And then since Mike doesn't know that this is a prequel, he doesn't know that the Jedi have been around for thousands of years and it confuses him that a protocol droid would know what the Jedi look like when they wear the same thing throughout all the movies. I'm sure the droids built to understand different languages would also know a little bit about culture of those languages. So it isn't so hard to believe that the droid would know what Jedi are. And the droid even kind of second guesses itself by saying it believes. It doesn't like know for sure. And just based off that hunch, Palpatine is going to let that ruin his plan. So he tells them to kill them. Palpatine's a Sith. He kill as many Jedi as he can if he gets the opportunity. But anyway, that's it for this part. It seems like Mike still has a hard time watching these movies. He might have ADHD. And I just wanted to die when I saw Green